Ladies and gentlemen, we are live for the Go Home Show of resolutions per minute. We will have titles defended on the AVW portion. And we will have title contender matches for the PBW portion because resolutions per minute is a PBW-centric pay-per-view. But right now it's time to get a bit extreme. Six matches and we're kicking off with... Alexander versus James Kenny. Now Alexander had a lot of success in PBW. Not so much in AVW, but he's done quite well. James Kenny hasn't had as much success, but he's looking to recover that. And if he can beat someone like Alexander, who is very decorated in his own right, we'll see where it gets him. an extreme rules match making his way to the ring from new york weighing in at 245 pounds the superstar and here is alexander former pbw international champion in fact the longest reigning champion with that particular title belt and he is here to kick off the show I know, I really should have changed his name to Alexander. I keep forgetting to do that. But here is Alexander to kick off the show against James Kenny. Rocking this attire, which he debuted at War of Attrition. And I think it looks quite dapper. From London, England, weighing in at 320 pounds, the king, the hardcore icon, James Kenny. And here comes James Kenny from London, England. Now, he must be someone who's familiar with something like AVW, which is the kickstart of. Uh, which was. The kickstart of um, British death matches, basically. Well, was it? I don't know. Uh, it was where Conor Gates got his start, and he won the War of Attrition. So there you go. <laughs> that was the point I was trying to make. Damn it! And James Kenny, I don't know if he got his start here, but this is definitely his kind of environment. Also, that didn't say 320. I think that just said James Kenny. I think those are actual names that you can say in this game. Anyway, he hasn't had a lot of success since he first debuted, but he does have all the tools to start that path. The question is if it starts with someone like Alexander, who again, very decorated, very tough. Here we go. So with some back and forth brawling. German by James Kenny. Going for the pin. Zero count. But James Kenny joins down Alexander, went for the bell clap, hit with a drop kick, and the Hurricane Rod, a good offense there, good combo by Alexander. And way late on Wee James. James Kenny, the first to attempt to get a weapon. Remember, extreme rules. Actually, no, he's not doing that. He's still comp contemplating his entire life. 
Big bulldog there to Alexander. And the stomp to the arm. And they're looking for a deadlift. Deadlift suplexes. There's a second one. And rolling through for a third. Brutal series of moves to Alexander there. And he is in firm control. He rolls out of the ring with Alexander. Not getting a weapon just yet. Good body scissor thing? That was a very strange move of offense, but... Oh, there's the uh, Spanish announced team. We might just have to move out of the way. Oh, James Kenny face first. Uh, yeah, we'll do a card against humanity after the show is over. Dob. James Kenny. Snap of the arm there. And ooh, reverse DDT. Reverse leg drop. DDT, excuse me. They are right by the Smash News team. And Alexander with that fluctuating elbow strike series. One of his biggest moves. And James Kenny effectively hooked against the Smash Nose table. Alexander finding his feet, he's going off right now. And the half the Yorktown facebuster on the outside. That's going to set something up a bit bigger. But will it be enough to put Kenny away because Alexander has been on the back foot or he was until this moment. Taking great advantage of being outside using the environment to his to his liking. Looking for the revolution. Now reminded this is extreme rules, not falls count anywhere. He does have to get James back in the ring. Instead content on beating the crap out of him a bit more. Rolling around for a pin. One, two. Oh my goodness, I actually thought that was it. Alexander still staying on Kenny. I think he took a bit of a breather there. He has exerted a lot of energy by this point. And Kenny, finally fighting back a little bit here. And, oh, the curb stomp. One, two. Kenny, again, staying on Alexander. To got in mind here. Spinning back kick. One, two. Alexander kicks out. James Kenny probably thinking, what's he going to do to put Alexander away? Let's note for a big power slam there. Elbow. And another one. Gets him with the pelly kick. And they're looking for another. Curb some and that burst Alexander open. One. Two. Alexander. Burst it open, still kicks out. Went for a reverse DDT. Kenny. With a great reversal suplex. This has been a brutal match and this is just the first one. The JKO connects. One, two. Alexander still in this.
And Kenny looking for something here, calling Alexander to his feet. Went for a bionic elbow, trying to open that cut up a bit more. Alexander go out of the way, but Kenny. Turned around into a fisherman's driver there. Or a Samoan driver. I don't really know what that was. One. Two. Alexander holding out. And James looking for a go go plotter. Looking to tap out Alexander. Could he pick up his first win? No! Alexander! Manages to escape somehow. Blood streaming down his face. Kenny knows he's in control, but he's throwing everything and the kitchen sink at Alexander. Hasn't put him away. German suplex, I think he started the match with. Picks him up for another big power slam into the pin. One, two, Alexander kicks out. Going for the arm there, Alexander gets up, hits him with an elbow, kicks the stomach, and the revolution! One, two, James Kenny kicks out! Reminded, this is the opening match. This is fucking incredible. Alexander looking to open up James Kenny. Much like he's been opened up, not successful just yet. Clothesline. Another one. In the corner. Another clothesline. And off the ropes. Ducks that. And a leaping clothesline for good measure. Alexander. Somehow finding all the energy in the world despite being battered and bloodied. Looking for the Yorktown face buster. He's going for the revolution right, right after that. No! That might have cost him James Kenny. Turning. Oh! Oh my god, snake eyes. On the turnbuckle. Good back body drop counter by Alexander. And looking for another... Revolution. And the pin again. One, two, three, Alexander. From behind gets the victory. G, G to both men. And yeah, that's right, I'm actually using like the Gavin Grayson GG thing now, sue me. Alexander on the back foot for the majority of that was busted open and picks up the win here is your winner the superstar and Alexander sticking his tongue out probably tasting some of the blood on his lip there as you could see I mean it is all violence wrestling you're bound to see a cut at some point, you know, and the, there it is, smeared all over Alexander's face. That is the face of victory, let's just appreciate it for a few more seconds. Okay, let's move to the next match. Next up, Christian Morales versus Pistolero. Now, Christian Morales has picked up a lot of steam lately on AVW. Let's not forget, Morales is also the first ever over-the-top rum Royal Rumble winner. He's a former two-time PBW World Champion, former international champion. He's had some good success on AVW, as has his faction, the Dons of Death, the Kobayashi relatives. I forget if they're brothers or nephew and uncle. I think they're nephew and uncle. And Pistolero has not had a lot of success, bizarrely. He's one of the most decorated superstars ever. He hasn't picked up many major wins, though. Not even in an environment where I think he'd be better, but we'll see what we can do here.
making his way to the ring from Fresno, California, weighing in at 241 pounds, Christian Morales. Here comes Christian Morales, the Don. First ever over the top Rumble winner, main evented the first ever Defy the Gods, which is basically my version of WrestleMania, and won the World Championship. Well, the PBW World Championship. An AEW has not held a title yet, but he's seen a really good amount of success. He is tough and he is vicious and cunning. I think those are his most dangerous weapons, but speaking of tough, we've got his opponent yet. And here comes Pisto Stevens Kyle Lero. <laughs> now this one has seen a, a good a good chunk of success in PBW. I believe he has held a title there at some point. He hasn't seen as much in AVW just yet. However, I mean he could yeah, he is a former international champion, so I did just have to look that up. But he has he has not gotten a lot of victories. I don't think he's gotten a single victory since he first came to AVW. So imagine what that would mean if he could beat someone like Pistol Air, uh, like Christian Morales, excuse me. Who, uh, who was, you know, the first ever over the top Rumble win. I mean, that is a big accolade. And here we go. German suplex to start and. Okay, if, if every match in AVW starts with a German suplex and ends in a zero again, I'll be quite happy. Massive lariat from Morales, though. Morales looking a bit bigger than we usually see him. And there's a German suplex from Pistolero. Who's got Morales up for a deadlift powerbomb. Big elbow. Go for the uppercut to the body. Go counter. And flapjack from Pistol uh, Christian Morales. Crystal Arrow. Christian Morales. Go catch the leg and a good sweep. And Morales, the first one to attempt to go for a weapon, very smart. Like I said, cunning. Taking advantage of the extreme rules default, and he gets a table in the mix. Slayer against the rope. Duck under. Oop! Went for the uh, went for a take then, but good counter knee from Pistol Arrow. Who? Good, good chuck there. Good yucking from Pistol Arrow. He's got Morales in his sights. Go catch a leg from Morales. Uh, yeah, in AVW, it's Extreme Rules default, so weapons are always legal in AVW. And Morales is going to the top rope. He's calling Pistol Arrow up to, to his feet. What's he going for? Oh, big axe handle. And now Morales going to the outside again, picking up a different weapon. Wasn't able to use the table, he's looking for something else. He's got a sledgehammer. Good catch from Pistol Arrow. And good drop kick. And now looking for a deadlift. Back suplex. One. Just 1.9. 1.8. We'll call it 1.8. Good counter double leg from Morales. Let's push the around and good elbow right to the throat. Going for the pin. One, two.
Blitz, are you just gonna take that? <laughs> Pistolero looking for the Northern Lights and Vertical Suplex combo, which probably does have a name, I forget what it is. They're looking for some ground and pound, trying to open up Morales, I think. Oh, elbows right to the head. And it worked! Morales is bleeding. And Pistolero is looking to capitalize, looking for the Cruiserweight Killer. And there it is, the CWK. That could be it for Morales, that could be an early night. One, two, three. Pistolero getting the job done quick. That might be his first big win on AVW. GG to him. Of war. It's my favorite extreme E Fed show. Here is your winner, Kyle Stevens. And Kyle Stevens. Kyle P. Stevens. With a big, big, big old dub. A massive one over someone like Morales, who was a former world champion, let's not forget. Because you can't forget, because I have remind you like six times by this point in the show. Anyway, next up, we have a tag team match. We have Willis and Piper versus the Morgan Bros, the first ever AVW tag team champions. I mean, I was going to say the titles aren't on the line, but the Morgan Bros don't have them, so that would have been pointless. However, this could lead to something for AVW Tag Team Gold and the Lion, and Willis and Piper have had more success together than they have as individuals, so we'll see where they get with it. Introducing first, from Phoenix, Arizona, weighing in at 220 pounds, Brett Willis. Forgot to unmute my mic there. <laughs> yeah, here comes uh, Brett Willis. Um, you might notice I haven't given Willis and Piper a tag team entrance together, and that is intentional because... I like the aesthetic of a tag team not fully agreeing with each other, being from two different worlds, two different planes of, like, uh, existence. I was going to say, no, that doesn't work. Being from two different ideologies when it comes to wrestling. I mean, Brett is a lot more used to the hardcore stuff. Colin is, you know, he's more of a technician. A lot more of a powerhouse sort of guy. A lot more of a throwback sort of act. Nothing like Brett at all, which is why I love the idea of them together. Tokyo, Japan, 
weighing in at 195 pounds, Colin Piper. And here comes Cloyne Pipper. Get your gears in chat. Anyway, yeah, this man, much like Brett Willis, did not have a lot of success on his own in AVW. But much like Brett Willis, once, once teaming with Colin Piper, or much like Colin Piper teaming with Brett Willis, ever since they came together, they've had more success. They've come close to realizing tag team gold. They're just not fully able to put it together yet. But I have a feeling that they'll get there. You can see the differences in entrances as well. Brett a lot more, um, a lot more reserved. Colin Piper a lot more gregarious, a lot more open. You know, he actually looks happy to be here. And here come Morgan's brothers, the Morgan's brothers, the brothers Morgan. Noah on the left, Jude on the right. I don't know what they do there. I think they're supposed to remove their hoodies or something, but they sort of stay on. Anyway, yeah, these guys are former PBW Tag Team Champions. In fact, had the longest reigns with those belts. First ever AVW Tag Team Champions, but lost those in their first defense. However, they've had a lot of success since losing those titles, and they look to be on the road to, uh, to getting them back. They have tag team chemistry at the Wazoo. And, and the, and the Waz, ah. That was fucking terrible, I'm sorry. Let's move on. Noah and Brett to start, and Brett going off early. Working on the arms of Noah, which is very smart. Because Noah likes a good lariat. He, a lot of his offense relies on his upper body, so Brett needs to focus on that area. Stopping on the wrist there. Going for a sort of cross face. With Jude in range to tag in. Noah. <laughs> Big old yeets there. Looking for a dragon sleeper with the body scissors. Now remember, because this is extreme rules, there is no rope break. Two men colliding there. Good hip toss from Brett. And... Gets the first tag to his Brett, in comes Colin Piper. Another man who looks to Lariat, much like Noah Morgan. And speaking of Lariat, there's a big one from Noah. And he uses the time, uses free time, the free space to tag in Jude. Jude looking for an airplane spin on Colin. Just looking at it is making me a bit dizzy. Round and around and around. Okay, you can imagine that Jude is going to be a dizzy, but he goes for a pin. Just one. Uh, just just one. Just nothing. And oh, I thought he was going for a dragon suplex, but no, so he went for a dragon power bomb. I guess you could call it. Backbreaker. And another one. 
Crushing blows to the ribs of Jude Morgan. And no one's looking to get involved, but that does give Colin a bit of free space. Go for a Vader bomb there. Trying to choke the life out of Jude Morgan, which isn't a dirty move, because remember, extreme rules, that is allowed, that is fine. Good counter object from Jude. And I think that's the wrong corner. Brett Willis tags himself in, very smart. Wilson Piper. Showing really good psychology here. But, oh, good combo there from Jude. And reverse EDT. I think he was looking for attack move of sorts, but Brett Willis, Brett Willis? Brett Willis with the counter. Another counter from Jude. Are you going to see this a lot? No, the Morgan brothers get the tag. And double arm snap. Off the ropes. Double kick. Noah preventing Brett Willis from being able to tag and call in. Oh, big boot. Was snapping Brett's head off. I think Noah Morgan is quite possibly the stiffest worker in all of EFEDs. Not just PBW, AVW, CW, like just all of EFEDs. Good close line to the back of the head. Now dragging him to his corner is Brett Willis going to take in Colin. He is. This is very smart from Wilson Piper, keeping, keeping themselves fresh, frequent tagging. Gotta love it. And another massive Larry hit. The stomps to the back. And just working over that arm. Maybe looking to bend the fingers back of Colin Piper. And much like how they uh, Willis and Piper should focus on Noah's upper body, the Morgan Bros in Colin's case should focus on his upper body too. He has a lot of upper body strength. Good jawbreaker counter there. And STO. Good sneak behind him there. Clips him with a neck breaker. Yeah, I, I wish that about tag teams too. I wish there were a tag rope at least you could hold. Oh, the backdrop driver by Colin Piper. And backbreaker. And preventing Noah from being able to get to his corner now. Oh, Colin. Looking for the yeah, Harriet. One. Jude breaks it up. And Colin makes Jude pay with his life for being an insolent fool. But Noah Morgan is the type of guy who can take a lot of punishment, so I wouldn't have been surprised if he kicked out. Good rope hang there from Brett Willis. I remember Extreme Rules, so these these gentlemen can spend a lot of time out of here. Brett Willis could get involved if he wanted to. Good elbows from Noah. Good shots from Colin. Good catch to the leg there. And back into the ring. Is Colin going to tag Brett in? I think he was thinking about it, but went for an elbow drop to the back instead. Into the corner. Now tagging in Brett. Holds him up for a kick to the stomach. Good answered by Noah. Oh, rolls him through. No, lifts him up. Oh my goodness. What would you even call that? Like a deadlift schoolboy powerbomb? 
I'm not really sure what to classify that as. The counter from Noah. And oh, knee. Massive knee. Right to the tummy. And the high kick. The good counter from Brett again. Misses the punch. Now Morgan is looking for that tag to his brother. Brett is not letting him get it though. And Brett spears Jude right off to the side. Pulls him back for the big knee to the stomach. The psychology in this match is something to behold. Good back body drop there from Noah. Good elbows from Noah. Doesn't open Brett up, but I think he might have come close. Into the corner again. Jude is back on the apron. And now the Morgan Bros are finally looking to end it. Looking for the family fallout. And Colin right there to break it up. Good sidewalk slam to, uh, to Noah. Almost said nude Morgan. Good lowercase AA there from Brett. I thought Brett had the counter there, but Jude turns out and right into an Enziguri. Is he going to try and go for a weapon? Not quite yet. Good shots to the body there. Spinning back kick, elbow. Good counter from Brett. Chop. Two train back and forth. The big elbow from Jude. Shots to the arm. And just working over and over again. But if I were Jude, I would go for Brett's legs. A lot of Brett's kicks. In fact, his finishes are kick moves as well. That's where I love his power lies. Good counter there. To trading back and forth right now. And snap suplex there. On the on ye old outside area. Oh, went for spinning back fist, but Jude caught him with an elbow and Brett is bleeding. I think he was looking to try and repay the favor to Jude by busting him up in the still steps, but Jude having none of that today, so. Leaps up, massive lariat there. Pick that one up from his big brother. These two spending a lot of time outside, and now we're finally getting involved. And. Oh, the brain bursts are right to the knee. He could have gotten more involved. Could have helped his brother a bit more. Jude, not fully sure what to do right now. Maybe trying to recover a bit there. Counter, kick to the stomach. Another one. Went for the knee slide but missed. And Brett looking to make him pay. Massive suplex there. Oh, went for that running knee right at the side of the head. Counted for these two. And sort of a fisherman's suplex thingy? I'm not really sure what that, like a release one.
And it kicks right to the temple. And that's what I meant by the leg power. And there's that knee. Finally lands it on Jude. Tried to pick up for something, but he's exhausted by this point. Buckles. Jude went for the next lady, missed. He's lucky his head didn't hit the corner of that announce table. And finally, back in the ring, the two men go. Brett preventing Jude from reaching his brother. And snaps the arm there. Brett Willis looking for the end, looking for the rock out kick. And that busts Jude open. Pin. One. Two. No. Jude kicks out. Oh, Brett's got another one loaded. And that's got to be it. That opens Jude up again. One, two, three. Noah weirdly not breaking up the pin. Willis and Piper with the victory. G, G, what a contest that was. Papio G kicked out the first one, despite being busted open. Really speaks volumes of his heart. Here are your winners, Brett Willis and Colin Piper. Brett Willis and Colin Piper. Celebrating their victory. And they have earned it absolutely. And I reckon that puts them into a tag team title contenders match, leaning them to over the top. I think that sounds good. Next up, the last non title match on the AVW half of the card Cody Hale versus Dawn Wolf. Now, both these men, both these men, both these women have had. Ups and downs, shall we say? Cody has not, not won yet in AVW, but Don Wolf has picked up a fair few victories, so we're going to see how it goes for them, and we're going to see if Don Wolf can pick up another W or if Co Cody Hell will get her first. Making her way to the ring from Chroma City, Cody Hale! Here comes Cody Hale. Now, she's a highly sought after talent. She's been to a lot of places, she's won a lot of gold. She hasn't won yet in AVW. However, she does have that certain something to get that victory. I fully believe she can do it. And I mean, Dolph is not a bad opponent to get her first victory over. She's not an easy one to get her first victory over. From Chicago, Illinois, Dawn Wolf. And here comes Dawn Wolf rocking gear that is inspired by a wrestler that will remain nameless. Sweet. 
So, uh, yeah, this is Dawn Wolf. Um, she's picked up a fair few victories. She's always been, like, on that cusp of something a lot bigger, though. A lot bigger than herself, and I think... I was going to say if she gets a victory over Cody Hale, it would mean a lot, but Cody Hale has yet to win, so... I'd argue this match is a lot more important for Cody. I mean, I don't really know. I mean, who's to say it will go? But here we go. That's no title match of the night. Cody's starting strong with some good shots there. Half kick attempts, Dawn side steps. Good suplex there from Cody. Staying in control right now against Dawn. Misses the chop there. And Cosadora into the arm drag. Good technicality from Dawn Wolf. Oh, the knee right to the arm. And I think that's a good area for Cody to focus her offense on as well as just the head. I would go for the legs of Dawn personally, and for Cody, if I were fighting her, I'd go for the arms. I think that's where a lot of the offense will, uh, lies. Dawn lower body, Cody upper body. Go, good head scissor with the elbow to the back of the head, top of the head rather. Good counter from Dawn. Good sweet kick. One, just after one. Good elbow from Dawn. And the drop kick to the back by Cody. Sort of went for a springboard forearm, but. Missed completely. They're looking to wash the boot across Cody's face, I think. Choking it with a foot, rather. You're going for a pin. One. Just one. Dawn's getting small bits of offense in, but Cody is definitely in control. Stomp to the back. Now Dawn climbed to the top. And big elbow drop. That is one of the go-tos. Clothesline. And Cody is looking to follow up. Will she pick up a weapon? Not just yet. Cody throwing across the floor there. Back in they go. Is Dawn going to get a weapon before she gets back in? No. Keeping the foot choke going. Focused heavily on the neck area of Cody Hill and the head area. Which could be good. Like cause concussion might discombobulate Cody a little bit. And if that's the goal, it might not be wise for Cody to go for a jawbreaker. I mean, I, I have a cat and feeding him is never a mistake. Oh, massive elbow there from Cody. A kick to the stomach. And face first off the LED board on the ring. On the side of the ring. And the DDT. Cody Hale. In firm control right now. I don't know what she's going for there, but... Good catch from Dawn.
looking for a looking for a cross face. Cody is pretty easily slips out. And the famous sir. Head scissor. They're looking for the Hail Mary. We're going to the top rope. Thinking the elbow drop. But Dawn rolled out of the way. Dawn with the Moon Killer, I think that's called. Two. Three. Cody Hale, winless. And Dawn with a big victory. GG to Dawn Wolf. Cody surely looked in control for a lot of that, but it took Dawn Wolf a little opening and she managed to get the win. Dawn Wolf. Oh, so that's why we just one hand race. She has to get a couple more. And celebrating her victory over Cody Hill. Heal? I don't know who that is, but what I do know is that we got a big match. AVW Chaos Championship on the line. Champion Ryan Silver will be taking on contenders Frank Victoria Anderson and the Honky Stonk Man. Jay Scott. I'm looking forward to this one. Let's go. Introducing the challenger from New York, weighing in at 227 pounds, the tank, Frank Victoria Anderson. Here comes Frank the Tank, FVA. Definitely on his way into this championship match for the Chaos title. Questions, will he win it? Because he is against someone like Jay Scott, very decorated superstar despite a short time. And, you know, current champion Ryan Silver, who's also a former tag team, uh, former AVW tag team champion too. Does FBA have what it takes to go that little bit? A little bit further. God damn it, I forgot to change Jay Scott's entrance. You know what? I, I actually tried talking to him to try and change his entrance and he didn't he didn't want to. It's not that I've forgotten or anything. It's just that Jay Scott is eccentric and uh, egotistical, so I wanted a longer entrance than everyone else.
And introducing the challenger from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 220 pounds, Jay Scott. And here comes the stir germer, the honky stonk man, Jay Scott. Has had a level of record since he first debuted for AVW. He's got a lot of gold in a lot of other places, which I won't say the name of because I'm not sure if I'm legally allowed to. But yeah, um, J. Scott. You know what? Even outside of Kayfabe, the dude who owns J. Scott, if you want to call him that, just a really good bloke. J. Scott as the wrestler, he, you know, he, he's a person, <laughs> he's a character, isn't he? I really should have changed it to the shorter entrance that he has, but I'm a moron. Yeah, still J. Scott, it's challenge for the AVW Chaos Championship, as he gets smoke blown up his face and that that entertains me a lot. See, I'm just running out of the shit to say, so just let him do his own thing. And introducing the champion from Manchester, England, weighing in at 185 pounds, he is the ultraviolent extreme champion, Ryan Silva. And here comes Ryan Silva, one half of the former AVW Tag Team Champions, alongside TJ Black, the Silver Bullets. Representing him here. Now, this is his second defense, I think. He hasn't had a lot of defenses with the title, but then again, the Silver Bullets, they don't really um, give a damn, so. The challengers and champion weren't even announced. But still, there's the champion going right after FVA. And Jay going right after the champion. Ryan Silver focused on Jay Scott right now. FVA wisely staying out of the way. Big knee to Ryan Silver. Pardon me. Good snap suplex to Jay. Kick to the back. And the chop to Ryan Silver. FVA. Not staying fo too focused on one thing at any one time. Go cross by to the champion. Laying it into him right now. But Jay Scott with the opportunity. Drugs FEA to the outside. And now Jay Scott. He could go for either Ryan or FEA. 
Oh, went for the bionic elbow, but I think I think FEA moved out of the way or Jay's feet accidentally hit the LED there. And FEA with the hurricane run to Ryan Silver. No. Big power bomb to Ryan Silver. Remember this is one fall to a finish two. Not even a one count. Jay Scott wisely being the first person to look for a weapon. Went for the shot with the kendo stick, but if, uh, Ryan Silver knocked it out of his hand. Golf kick there. No. Focuses on FEA. Oh! Snap suplex right onto the kendo stick. Let's go do a low damage to FEA's back. Good double leg. And tries to go after Ryan Silver, but eats that kick to the face. Good counter there. Went for the kick, but Ryan got out of the way. Massive clothesline. FEA rolling out. And Ryan Silver clips Jay with a massive knee. Oh, I think he was looking for like a driver or something, but Ryan with a counter. Small package only gets a one. Oh, I think FEA got Ryan on the side of the head with that big, uh, with that running kick there. And J Scott working on the arms of FEA, which is smart because FEA's biggest moves are with his arms. And a lot of J's biggest moves attack the arms, so that's very smart. Good AA. There's a lot of chaos between these three right now. And uh, FEA looking for the Bravestone combo. Wasn't able to fully complete it, Jay got in the way. It's the super kick and the drop kick. Went for the headbutt, but Jay with the counter. Skullboy. Super kick. And ducks under the crossbody from FEA. Pin. Oh, is that elimination the style? <gasps> Ryan Silver was eliminated. We're guaranteed a new champion. And Jay Scott just took out the champion. Down to FVA and Jay Scott. count there. Oh, the springboard crossbody right across Jay's back. Kick to the stomach and Jay with the big curb stomp. One, two, no, FVA kicks out. A counter from Frank. Oh, sort of an inverted Michinoku driver there. Good close lines there from FEA. And the super kick. And Jay's been busted open. One. Just one count there. I'm very much on the edge of my seat because we're going to get a new champion here. And Jay... Taking time to recover, I think. Wait, it's on the blur from his face. So it's not getting in the way, not screwing his vision. And maybe looking to bust open Frank. Not quite successful there. The crossbody from FEA. 
Running ragged. And Dollar Rage. Dollar Rage connects. That could be it. We could get a new champion. One. Two. No, Jay kicks out. And there you have it folks, J. Scott has done it, here's the new AVW Chaos Champion. And not only that, but he aced it too, he beat both Ryan Silver and Frank Victoria Anderson, he eliminated both of them. There's your new Chaos Champion, Jay Scott. His first bit of gold in AVW or PBW. I mean, say what you will. I, I will say what it will about the character, but I can't deny I'm always happy to see him win something. Jay Scott should be damn proud of that victory. Scoring the eight in an incredible match. But speaking of what I'm hoping will be another incredible match, the last title match of the card. Moto Madison versus Akita Tureshi. Moto is going to try and regain the AVW Women's Championship. And we're going to see how this one's going to go. Last match of AVW before we take our break. Then we'll be back for PBW. contest is an extreme rules match and is for the ultraviolet women's championship I forgot that the announcer doesn't say the names until they get in the ring and the belt is being raised for the ceremony. So yeah, Moto Madsen, the first AVW Women's Champion. Now ever since she lost the title, she's come quite close to getting it back. Hasn't fully made it back yet. However, she's as determined as ever she's riding a big wave of momentum against the one woman she's never been able to really beat to get the title back. I should have made this two out of three falls, that would have been great. But it would have made the show a lot longer. Oh, 
Anyway, here comes the Asian nightmare. The Tokyo ghoul, if you will. Okita Toreshi. The woman has done it all, basically. She absolutely steamrolled the Golden Path tournament last year. Won the PBW Women's Championship. Lost that in the first defense, but then won the AVW Women's Championship. I think she lost that in the first defense as well, but she hasn't lost it again since she won it back. Introducing the challenger from Detroit, Michigan, the Motor Madison. Introducing the champion from Owina, Japan, she is the ultraviolet women's champion, the Asian Nightmare. And there is the title being raised up in the ceremonious, ceremonious, ceremonial uh, title raising ritual, uh, which may or may not involve a goat sacrifice, but I can't say. Anyway, here we go. Moto Madison, oh, flying right out the gate with a big clothesline to Akita. She knows she has to take it to Akita early if she wants to have any hope of an Ingo Rain and winning the title back. Good shot to the stomach there. Akita got out of the way though. Trying to a lot more speed. And Akita's already, uh, sorry. Moto is already pretty damn fast. Big kick though, big boot. Moto Messon. Good Hurricane Rana. She's staying in control right now. Elbows right to the top of the head. You were the goat, Dobby. What were you the goat at? I wasn't paying attention to myself. Oh, good low angle neck breaker there from Akita. And Akita being the first to attempt to go for a weapon. And. Oh, the go- oh! I get what you mean. Something well. Good combo from Akita though, elbow. Damn near concussing Moto. Moto with the counter there. Shots over and over again. Akita gets out of the way, that kick, chop. And, oh, has the leg lifted up. That back suplex dropping Moto right in the back of her head. And Akita, big brain buster to the knee. Stomp to the back. See, that's very small of Akita. She needs to work on the limbs, especially of Moto, mostly the legs. Moto Madison's kicks are some of the best moves, and her finishes rely heavily on her feet. And the brutal rope fling back, which I think should be banned from AVW personally. Good sit on the arm, and I think that's what Moto needs to do to Akita, work on the arms. And they're looking for the one bike stand. And they're looking to end it early. The super trick kick. I think she was trying to go for the pin, but nothing came of it. And there's Akita going crazy. She scares me. Moto not picking up the kendo stick. That might be a mistake on her part, but... Good. Neckbreaker there. Backbreaker, rather. 
I know where body parts are. Good elbow. Good catch from Nikita. Couple of shots there. Rolls under. Rolling kick. And the knee driver into the turnbuckle. Ah, uh, I forgot what that move was called. God damn it. But there's the bloody nightmare that was almost right onto the kendo stick, and that could be it. One. Two. Akita retains. God damn it. <laughs> when that bloody nightmare onto the kendo stick did not do a lot to help uh, Moto's cause there. Asian Nightmare, the bloody vampire, the Tokyo Ghoul. Akita Tarashi. With another... With a big win here. Anyway, that'll about do it for ABW. I will see you in a few minutes for PBW. I don't gotta get that card set up. I thought this part was incredible though. And I'm really glad that Jay's holding gold in my show too. So, uh, yeah, that makes me happy. Yeah, see you in a few minutes. Um, gonna set up the other card. Thank you for watching so far. Be back in a bit.